This tourmaline is an example of what is called a closed C-axis. See the beautiful color on the side of this stone? This is the AB axis, and the AB axis is open. On these two sides, there's no light. It's black, no color. That is the C axis, and in this case, it is a closed C axis. Now, when buying gemstone rough, it's best to avoid a closed C axis when searching. And you know, online, you'll often see rough gem sellers showing you pictures and videos of a piece of tourmaline. Lots of still photos, but for some reason, they don't show you the C-axis. You should always go and ask about the C-axis. The opposite of a closed C-axis is an open C-axis. An open C-axis means that color is coming through the stone C-axis. Now the issue with an open C-axis is to determine that the color coming through is desirable or whether it's not desirable. Sometimes the color coming out of the C-axis is not a vibrant uh, color, not a beautiful color. Sometimes it's a kind of an, just not an attractive color compared to the AV color. But sometimes the C-axis actually has better color than the color coming out of, off of the AV axis. And then you have a decision to make. So you want to buy tourmaline where the C-axis is open and has a color that you want to mix with the rest of the gem. And in those cases where the C-axis has better color than the AB axis, um, again, you have to make a decision. Here is a 52.7 carat pink tourmaline, clean with an open C-axis. In fact, the pink color in the C-axis is better more vivid than the color along the AB axis. So what do you do in this case? Do you cut a big gemstone in an emerald rectangular shape with the lighter pink uh, being the predominant color? Or do you cut this big beautiful stone into several smaller stones and cut maybe hexagonal shaped gems with a beautiful pink color? I still haven't decided on this pink one. And yes, Bopi's asking me all the time about it. So getting back to our stones for today. Uh, so what design do we want when we have a closed C-axis? We want a steep facet in the pavilion on the two sides with the closed C-axis. This is because we do not want any of that closed black or very dark darkness to be reflected into the pavilion facets and reflect back as it will tend to darken the entire stone. So I found a killer of a design for a dark tourmaline. It's called, well, Killer. And it was created by the late Jeff Graham, one of my favorite gem cut designers. Killer is copyright protected, so I can't give you the cutting instructions, but here is what it's supposed to look like. This is about all the information I can share with you due to copyright issues. If you like the design and are interested in cutting it, it can be found in Jeff's book, Additional Designs Number 8. And I know, if you're thinking you'll go on Amazon or eBay or the other online used bookseller and find a you know, copy of Jeff's book at a great price, good luck. If any, anyone has been able to pick up any of Jeff's books on designs at these sites, Please let me know in the comments because in you know my experience it's not going to happen like never. However, Jeff's books are still available from the Rock Peddler, which sells lapidary equipment and supplies. I understand that Gene Rodolfi, the owner of Rock Peddler, is the only authorized seller of Jeff's books on behalf of Jeff's estate. So if you're interested in other designs by Jeff, contact the Rock Peddler. When I trimmed my larger piece of tourmaline for the video where I cut the chick design, I took that trimmed piece and I cut it in half to get these two pieces of tourmaline. I consider these bonus pieces as I could have just ground uh, these two pieces, the bigger trim piece, um, with my laps 
into tourmaline dust. Um, that's why a trim saw is useful and valuable. My plan is to make a pair of earrings from these trim pieces. For our earrings, what, uh, what we want to do for this design is that uh, our C-axis is, is closed. So we want this design, the facets that are very deep occur in this design at the at two sides and that's why we picked this design so those are the 24 degree index side and the 72 so what we want to do is at an angle of 90 degrees on our Ultratech with an index tooth 24 we want one of the closed C sides being flat down so it's right there one of the closed C sides is is flat down I could you know level it perfectly with our block but there's no need because you, know, you can eyeball it and see it close and more importantly when I glued the stone to the dop I eyeballed it to make sure it was close so our dop is again the key dop because we're going to cut the earrings at the same time so when our dop goes when our dop goes all the way in it's right there and that is the 24 and 72 side of this stone and the same with our other stone same thing when I glued it to the dot right there there's where the key dot sets in it's right at the 24 and 72 so we're ready to go we're using our key dots everything set up so that we can cut our two pieces of uh, tourmaline I'm going to start with the they're both the same almost this one is slightly thinner or smaller um, at the uh, c-axis side so I'll start with it again I want to make both of these the same so I put it in until the key dot sets tighten up our set screw and proceed with our instructions for cutting the design called killer okay this is the the end piece of what was our you know, our two pieces of tourmaline before I cut them in half this was at one end of the tourmaline and you can see and this is the closed C side you can see that uh, fracture line right there and that is the end piece it's actually goes down there so there's a piece that really needs to come off it's going to chip off but I really need to grind it off but when I do that the if I make a pair of earrings I got to make this smaller because I now have to at a 90 degree bring this in flush now I could move the entire stone over in that direction so I grind on this side and grind less on that on this side but it's not really necessary this is going to be a smaller stone so I can grind it down flush for a new 90 degrees here and and grind it all the way around at 90 degrees it's just going to make it a smaller stone the point is if I want earrings still then uh, this stone is going to be the other stone is going to be gonna have to make it smaller and I don't know that I want to do that because I really like this blue green color so I think I'm going to give up the idea of a matched pair of earrings with this piece and make two uh, two stones of different size using the killer design so I'm on with cleaning up this uh, 
this fracture, which was the end piece of our uh, tourmaline. So I won't make two small, small earrings. I'll make uh, two, one small and one larger uh, gemstone for other purposes. Now, if you look at the design, even without knowing what angles to cut the facets at um, and which index gear teeth to cut and in which order, you can still see that the uh, pavilion, the bottom half of the stone, has one tier or row of facets at the 24 and 72 index side and two tiers or rows at the 96 and 48 side. You can see that at the 24 and 72 side, the angle of the cut of the facets is going to be very steep. This is what you want for a closed C so that the blackness does not get reflected inside the stone. Or more correctly stated, so that the darkness is minimized. So the closed C of these stones get oriented in the 24 and 72 sides of the quill. Finished pre-polishing our tourmaline using 3000 diamond grit on a bat lap and now I'm going to polish our stones with uh, aluminum oxide using the dark side lap also by Gerlus and uh, then we'll transfer um, our stones and so we can cut the crown or the top half of the stone. Okay, I've pre-polished our tourmaline with a 3000 grit diamond on a bat lap. Now with this stone, uh, the way it's designed, it was a bit, it's a bit tricky on the table. And so I, I have gone in and roughed in the table. The table is very small for this design. It's right there, that little diamond. And the way you have to cut these, uh, these facets, these chevron shaped facets, there's a facet on this side and this side of our table, which a little bit of a problem if you can't, so, so what you have to do basically is rough in the table before you go back and try to get these end ones done. So it's a bit unusual to have to go through the, the uh, crown and then stop and basically you know preform the table and then go back and work the rest of the crown but that's the way I'm approaching this one just because of the way the crown that diamond shaped facet right there relates to the facets on each side to make sure they meet just right, you kind of got to rough that in. So now I'll go back to polishing our uh, crown and uh, see how they look. Finished polishing our blue or green blue uh, tourmaline, the first one. It's ready to put into the acetone and soak and get the adhesive off and I'll start and I'll finish up uh, the second one. All right, I finished polishing our two tourmalines. Um, again, they started out to be a matched set of earrings, but when I had an inclusion in this one, um, I could have made this one just as small and matched it to that, but at that point, uh, it, it made more sense to give up the match set of earrings and uh, keep the size of this one the way it was. But let's put them in, soak them in acetone and uh, see what they look like. Overall, I would say Killer is an excellent design, especially for a stone with a closed C-axis. The design itself is not hard, but it is not a beginner design either, mainly because the table's a bit tricky. I would rate this as an intermediate level cut, which means to me it's not too difficult, but not a design that a new cutter should use for any of his or her, say, first five gemstones. After that, no problem. 
I did have to go to plan B. I was cutting uh, these gemstones in plan A for a pair of earrings, but when I ran into an internal fracture with one of the stones, I had to make that stone much smaller to cut out that fracture. Uh, I decided instead of cutting the other gemstone much smaller than necessary to match the first stone that I'd go to plan B and they're two different sized gemstones with the same design rather than a pair of earrings. Let me know in the comments if you think I made the right decision. Overall I would say this design definitely brightened up these otherwise dark stones. Again let me know what you think. Happy faceting everyone.